So I, uh, I get the privilege and the honor of introducing uh, a man who I support. This is a public announcement of that, by the way. A man who I support for governor of the state of California, who, is, who has come to join us today to make his case to us about why he is this, why he should be the next chief executive officer of California. I think it's been probably 20 years or 30 years since we've had a governor in the state of California that was really a governor. We've had movie stars and we've had left-wing automatons and we had somebody who cared about packing the California Supreme Court with pro-choice act, liberal activist judges that was allegedly a Republican. But now we have an opportunity, I believe, to actually have a real Republican governor. Now, before you poo-poo this whole idea of John Cox for governor, let me tell you, Maryland went for Hillary Clinton by 1.2 million votes. Larry Hogan, their governor, is a Republican. Illinois was won by Hillary Clinton by 24 percentage points, or roughly 1.5 million votes. Bruce Raumer, their governor, is a Republican. Massachusetts, Hillary Clinton won Massachusetts by roughly 1.5 million votes, or about 30 percentage points. Their governor is a Republican. I, his name escapes me at the moment, but you get where I'm going. Just because the state of California is a liberal cesspool and a wasteland does not mean that we can't, with the right candidate, get a Republican governor. Here's the bottom line about John Cox and the reason why I'm supporting John Cox for governor. It's very straightforward. The guy's a self-made man. This guy's a multimillionaire. He has also put a million of his own dollars into his governor account. So he has put his money where his mouth is and said, I am committed to this. This is not a gag. I am serious. I am serious about going all over the state to make my case. John Cox holds our values. Number two, how often do you meet rich guys that just get totally and completely soft on all the issues that matter to us because they're trying to have their cake and eat it too? They want the fiscal conservatism of the Republican Party, but they want to be soft and squishy on everything else because, you know, that's the, the duplicitous world oftentimes that a lot of people like that live in. And number three, I see John Cox as a disruptor. His very presence in the race for governor, okay, is an antithesis to everything that those of us who are in this room that have been involved in politics for the last, in my case, 20 years, have been forced to accept. John Cox is not one of them. He's not from their groups. He is from the outside coming in. And so he's here today to make his case to us about why we should buy into his campaign for governor and what his vision and what his plan is for the state of California. Mr. Cox? Thank you, Aaron, and thank you for all the work that you've done, and thank you, uh, John, for putting this uh, together. And Todd and, and all, the, all the members of the California Impact Republicans. Uh, you know, I want to tell you, I'm one of you from the standpoint that I've worked in the vineyards. Uh, Aaron didn't mention it, but I was actually president of the Cook County Republican Party. That's Chicago. And, uh, you know, if you're going to fight the machine in Chicago, you've got to be a committed Republican, let me tell you right now. Uh, I always said that uh, being the president of the Cook County Republican Party was a little bit like being the opposition leader to Saddam Hussein. <laughs> you know, Chicago figures into my, my background. Um, you know, I, I moved out here about 10 years ago. Uh, when I did so, my friends told me I moved to the only state in the union that makes Illinois look well managed. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know about Illinois, right? Illinois is the state where the governors not only greet you at the border, but they make your license plates for you. <laughs> but I want to thank Shannon Grove uh, as well for being here and, and Jim Brulte. I mean, I know what it's like to fight the machine. And seriously, for a moment, I want to give you a little bit more of my background. Uh, Aaron, you did a great job, but I want to really tell you what has formed uh, my being. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those guys like uh, Mr. Newsom who uh, was born on third base and thought he hit a triple. 
<laughs> I started at the bottom. Uh, my mom was a Chicago public school teacher on the south side of Chicago. I was literally born at the University of Chicago. I always said that I lived and grew up in Barack Obama's district while he was back surfing in Hawaii. <laughs> and you know, with my mom, a school teacher, I really saw up close corruption. And that's why I want to be your governor in 2018. Because we've got to do something about corruption. My mother, God rest her soul, she, she retired, by the way, to Fresno, right near here. She retired in 1980 and lived the last 20 years of her life right here in Fresno. And she always told me about how great the Golden State was. But when I was a kid, she used to come home at, at night and she used to sit on the couch and she literally would cry. She, she'd shed tears because she had to deal with some of the worst principles that she ever had to deal with in Chicago. And what does this have to do with California? It's about corruption. Because the principals in, in the Chicago public schools were chosen because they were friends of the aldermen. And those kids, God love them, they didn't get a good education. And I gotta tell you, you're seeing the results of it now every single weekend in Chicago. Five murders, 40 shootings, because we're graduating, and I use that word euphemistically, we're, we're getting kids out of school, we'll call them graduates, who don't have the skills to succeed in the real economy. And that's a crime. You know, people think about corruption as a, a public official getting an envelope of cash in exchange for a building permit or something like that. You know what? Corruption is way, way more than that. Corruption is any time a public official makes a decision, because that's what we hire them to do, right? Make decisions. And they make a decision that's in their political interest and not in the best interest of the people that they represent. And it's wrong. And I'll tell you, it's going to end in 2018 in California with your help. So I moved out to California about a, 10 years ago. Believe it or not, I'm the last member of my family. I, I always tell people it took me 50 years to save up enough money to buy a house here. <laughs> and I discovered something. I discovered that this state is even more corrupt than Illinois. That's saying something. But you have something that's interesting. You have ballot initiatives, and we're going to talk about that for a second. I'm running for governor. I, it's in my blood, I guess, to try to do something about this, and Shannon knows what I'm talking about. She's fought the battle in Sacramento. But I'm running for governor because there's two Californias. There's the California we have, and the California we ought to have. The Golden State, the one my mom talked about. The California we have, I'm telling you right now, is in deep trouble. Do I need to recite the statistics? We're number one in poverty. Did you know that? This is the Golden State. This is the Golden State of the gold rush and the opening of the Pacific Rim. And we're number one in poverty. 12% of the nation's population lives in this state and we have 33% of the welfare cases. We have the highest cost of living. I don't need to tell you that. You can't, you can't buy a house in San Francisco in the Bay Area. Not that you'd want to live there now. It's a wonderful place. It so leans a little bit to the left, but that's okay. We have the highest income and sales tax rates. You know, usually a state that has the highest income tax rates has low sales tax rates. Well, we have both. And now, as Shannon referred to, we now have one of the highest gas taxes in the country. And going higher, I might add. Read John Kupal's column today about how they snuck in uh, an increase of, of even more than we anticipated. And that's before the cap and trade regulations add a lot more to the cost of gasoline. We need to do something about the escalating cost of living, the escalating taxes and spending that, that, the, that the career politicians, that's what they're in business to do. And why? 
because California has the largest legislative districts in the world. Not just the 50 states, the world. And that's the reason. I, Shannon is running for the state senate, as you know. And I and I my hat's off to her. But as you might know, a state senate district in California has a million people in it. Shannon, you're running in a district, it, it's like running for governor of North and South Dakota at the same time. So what happens when you have to run in a district that size? You need lots and lots of money and lots and lots of manpower, right? And that's what happens in Sacramento. We don't, we don't elect leaders in Sacramento, we elect professional fundraisers because that's in essence what you have to do. You have to sell your soul every single day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, all they're doing is raising money. And, what, and who's giving them this money? All the cronies, all the corrupt who make life great for themselves. They're taking care of themselves, but they're making life unaffordable and unlivable for the rest of us. Well, we have a solution. I'm not going to go into all the details now, but we have a ballot initiative that we're going to start collecting signatures for in about two weeks. And this is going to be a revolutionary change. It's going to go beyond the part-time legislature that Shannon has so, you know, valiantly fought for. It's going to reduce the size of districts so that we can campaign going door to door. See. I don't think people came to this country to, when they were fleeing a corrupt country back they left to come here and give their vote to another corrupt government. Do you think they did that? No. They came here for opportunity. They came here for freedom. And if we can get a chance to deliver that message door to door and talk to people about carrying that message of opportunity and entrepreneurship and free markets and personal responsibility and values, right? The values we hold dear, we're gonna win those elections. And what, one thing that people totally, totally abhor, they hate with a passion is corruption. Last year, Chapman University did a survey. The greatest fears what were your greatest fears? What do you think they came up with? Terrorism? Losing a loved one? The greatest fear, 65% of people said the greatest fear they had was government corruption. And this is gonna be a winning issue. And I gotta tell you, it is a winning issue on Republicans, Independents, and Democrats. It's across the political spectrum. And this, is the way that we're going to win the governor's mansion back in 2018. All the surveys show it, and we're going to drive that point home. I don't know about you, but I'm done with an education system that's run for the unions and the teachers and not for the parents and the students. Government monopolies don't work very well. Monopolies don't work well in the private sector either. We've got to break that monopoly. I'm done with a transportation system that it doesn't repair the roads, soaks up incredible amounts of money. I don't know if you know this, uh, Shannon talked about the gas tax. It costs five times the amount of money to repair a mile of road in California than it does in Texas. Wow. That's not acceptable. That means we get 20% of the roads repaired with our tax dollars. That is completely unacceptable. We're done with that. I'm ready for a transportation department that finally spends our money wisely. I'm done with having the highest housing costs in the country. We've got to build more housing. We've got to get rid of the oppressive regulation. CEQA is used as a way to drive up the cost of housing for all of us. I want my children to be able to afford a home, and I want you to make sure that your children can afford a home in California. We also have to do something about the business climate. I'm a businessman. I'm a small businessman. And what happens in California is that Big business and big labor conspire to drive up the cost of doing business. You know, we're number 50 of the 50 states in business climate right now. 
I'm done with being the last, dead last on business climate okay, in the U.S. And the spending and taxes have got to end. I don't know if you know this or not, but California generates more revenue than New York and Texas combined. What we've got to do, and I'm done with the spenders and the taxers in Sacramento, we've got to replace them with people from the neighborhoods who really have a goal of spending our tax money wisely. You know, I'm looking to inspire you to believe that we can have a Republican governor again. As, as Aaron mentioned, uh, there are now 19 states across the country that have a businessman as their governor. 19 states. He mentioned Larry Hogan in New Maryland, Charlie Baker in Massachusetts, but they're all over the country now. Doug Ducey in Arizona. People are waking up to the fact that politicians are there to pick their pocket and not deliver results. Well, I got to tell you, I'm a small businessman like many of you. I have to deliver results every single day. And if I don't, I get fired. And that's what we need with our state legislature. We need a legislature that we can fire if they don't do the job. I'm going to be on the ballot November 2018. On the same day, the neighborhood legislature is also going to be on that ballot. The people of this state are going to have the opportunity to make an historic change. You're the grassroots. You're the people who will bring that change to them. I'm sorry to tell you this. The politicians aren't going to do it on their own. Am I right? We're the ones that are going to have to do it. I'm bringing the tools to this. I, as Aaron said, I put my money where my mouth is. I put a million dollars into the, the committee, and believe me, I earned every penny of that, and that was not easy to do. And I'll put more in if I have to to get this job done. I'm not going to be a Meg Whitman. I'm not going to be a self-funder. I'm going to need a lot of people to help, and we shouldn't have a self-funder. We need somebody who believes in small business, who believes in entrepreneurship, who believes in opportunity. I'm a Jack Kemp Republican. And I, to me, I was on his steering committee when he ran for president in 1987. This is, this is 30 years of working in the Republican vineyards. That's, that's, that's where I'm coming from. This is no late uh, awakening by me. I've been involved in Republican politics for a long, long, long time. And Jack Kemp's message was opportunity. Jack Kemp's message was giving people a hand up and not a hand out. It's opportunity that people want. It's not a government check. It's not cradle to grave government support. People want a chance. And I think I represent that chance. I came from nothing and built up a life for myself and my children. I want to make sure that that continues, that the American dream is the California dream, is the, is the promise of the golden state that my mom talked to me about when I was a little kid. I want to bring that to California. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for my children. I'm doing it for all of your children. I'm, I'm doing it for the future of this state and this country because California is critical, critical to the continuation of the American experience. Join me in this effort. Let's keep on the fight. Let's talk about issues. Let's keep to our values. And let's win the governorship back in November of 28 and kick out the professional fundraisers in this legislature. Thank you very much.